So 2024 is going to be a presidential election year. I hate to bring the bad news to you. It's going to be a brutal year for truth, honesty, compassion, understanding, values that I have dear and dear to me. And the only way I can deal with that is to get outside and play and do softball and run and bike and hike with my friends. Unfortunately, my monkey mind and my camera won't really, really release me. And so when I'm outside swimming or, or walking, I notice that politicians are revealed to me and their nature by the nature of, the, of animals that I see. Um, and so tonight I'd like to share with you some of the observations that I've had. I originally thought I would focus on the animal kingdom, noting that politicians seem to me about as useful and as appealing as a blobfish, um, and, and dangerous and unpredictable as a shark, and slippery and forked tongue as a, um, as a snake. But, you know, we're here in Asheville, so I've got to go vegan. So we're going to talk about flowers. Um, and other vegetation. So flowers are like politicians. They're very, some of them are very flashy and are constantly saying, look at me, look at me. Or others are working in the background. Not sure what they're doing all the time, but they're working there. Um, and flowers like bring things that bring them, uh, like bees. Um, but mushrooms, they're not like all uh, politicians. They're not all scumbags. Um, you know, some politicians are really doing really good, important work. Um, as, as mushrooms do really good, important work within the, uh, the forest. But they also have to live among the slime and the, of each other. Um, so if you look up a Doug Fir or a, a Tulip plop, Poplar, I think of the great presidents of the past. That's what it comes to me, you know, uh, Abraham Lincoln or uh, George Washington or Thomas Jefferson, um, the Roosevelts. That's what I think about, and that's what really inspires me. Um, and these, these men, they steadfastly rose through the mayhem of politics to tower above their rivals as trees rise above the chaos and competition of the forest floor to tower above the canopy. So they had a lot of similarities to me. But alas, in my lifetime, politicians have been so disappointing. So few towering giants, so many parasite-infected cowards living to solely for uh, re-election, or worse, ugly troll-like monstrosities stomping on whoever gets in their way to power. You know, competition for money and votes is like competing for sunlight and nutrients in the forest. So give me the politician who, despite making a lot of missteps and wrong turns and poor decisions, rises above their competition with their honor and humility intact. Sadly, most politicians are split asunder. They lose their way, their ethics, their morality, and their money as they're looking for money and power. Or worse, they never really had any integrity. They just groveled among the monk and slime until some big donor came along and funded their rise. For a few favors, of course. I want to digress here a little bit because there's another way to think about politicians, and you can get it um, through looking at how surgeons think about their best patients. Now, a young surgeon would say, oh, maybe give me an accountant because, you know, they're all numbered and it's really easy to work with them. <laughs> and a librarian, uh, give me a librarian because they're all alphabetized and, you know, categorized and, you know, they're really neat and easy to work on. Or maybe a mechanic because you can give a mechanic a, a vague diagnosis and just tell them until I look under the hood, I'm not sure what we're going to do here. And they're okay if a few parts are left over after surgery. <laughs> But if you look at an experienced surgeon, they almost universally say, give me a politician. And you say, a politician? Oh, come on, that's, that's disgusting. Oh, no, they say. You really ought to give them a slice. After all, they have no gut, they have no heart, and they have no spine. <laughs> Plus, the head and butt are interchangeable. <laughs> so trees remind me of those politicians without a gut, heart, or spine, and how they learn how to survive. Bending every, every which way the wind blows, the poles show, and their sugar daddy's cash flows. Basically placating their constituents' fears by putting after their gears. But these butt-ugly abominations are constantly reaching. They're groping for money to feed their power addiction, and in some cases, maybe their legal fees. Um, they're howling for money all the time. 
do what you need, just slip another check up my sleeve. <laughs> the forest is full of these blighted, hollow, sallow, soulless, headless individuals <laughs> oozing sappy homilies with sanctimonious sincerity. They clickbait the 24-hour news media to constantly get their tripe uh, repeated and repeated and it spirals up until it becomes actually significant and useful to some people. The worst politicians seem to be metastasizing. They're multiplying unchecked. I don't understand this thing. And what I don't really understand is who's voting for these people? I, it's just unbelievable to me. So to soothe my, my problem with this, I come to think of my most favorite local mushrooms, the visually stunning Phallus impudicus. <laughs> In the future, I hope you'll be able to bring this mushroom to mind for yourself when you hear some of these politicians spouting some of their crap. And you can say, what is that politician spewing this time? It was only more impudicus pollen to, for our, our forest rather than crap or all this other stuff that they do. So, in the end, I wish that more politicians, rather than more trees, were ground into something useful. <laughs> like Soylent Green, perhaps. Harsh to say, some politicians are doing good work and deserve respect. That's probably true. But I'll bet there's many people in this room that would gladly run that grinder if, by November of this year.